It's good to see Amanda this morning. Amen. Slip in here. Yeah, praise God. <clears throat> well, I'm so glad to see Brother Marty this morning. Amen. Dolores, uh, she was here, I guess. Oh, well, there she is right there. <laughs> Amen. We're glad to see you all this morning. Amen. Hanging in there. Amen. We're missing Teresa and Angela and uh, Noah and Camilla this morning. And But, amen, through the prayers of God's people, they'll be back. Amen. Feeling better. Amen. Doing good. Amen. I do want to thank you for praying for this old man right here. I do feel a lot better than I did. <clears throat> and there's lots of people uh, that are having their bouts with uh, that old flu bug and stuff that's going around. I've kind of had a headache all morning this morning. I think it's uh, things that are blooming. You know, I don't think I'm sick. And just whenever springtime comes around and trees are blooming out. All right, that's good. Pray you got them? Brother Marty, was you going out there with them? Okay. I think they have. I didn't announce that. I'm sorry. Yeah, the new converts class. And Brother Dingman, God bless him. He's Amen. trying to help these uh, to understand uh, what they're involved in. Amen. Praise God. In Pentecost. Amen. We want to help them. Praise God. I had something already put together and then this morning I felt like the Lord directed me uh, something that he wanted me to address this morning and uh, <clears throat> he spoke this to me uh, a couple of weeks ago and I guess it's my fault for not getting it together Amen, but I went through all that crud, and with all that crud, it's hard to even think, you know? Amen. And uh, so, uh, anyway, I, I felt that perhaps he put this, brought this to my attention this morning, so I was nearly late for church because I, I, uh, I wanted to get a few of the scriptures uh, found, actually, where whoever was running the, the board could put them up there for you to read. <clears throat> and uh, so I had to go pick up people for church too. But between the two of them, I got here just right at time, I think. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. So I feel that, that the Lord gave me this for no doubt everybody that is here this morning. And not just you, myself as well. And I'm not here to preach something negative. I'm here to preach something that's, that's going to help you, Amen. I hope. Amen. It will help you, I believe, if, if you put it into practice. Yeah. It's not really something new, but it is something timely Amen. that we need to hear. Amen. There's people that struggle in their walk with God, and I believe it's unnecessary I believe it's unnecessary. We're going to all have some struggles and some battles. We're going to have days, you know, that we're flying higher than other days. And there's going to be days whenever you're doing your best to stay close to God. And, and yet in those days, sometimes you feel like you're the farthest from him. Amen. And there are things that we can do during those times and not just those low times, but at all times that we can do to be successful in our walk with God. Amen? We can be, we can have power. Amen? Yeah. Paul told Timothy to be instant in season, out of season. Amen. Amen. Whether you're in a summer or winter, or spring, or fall, 
All those seasons affect you differently and things happen differently during those seasons. Just like the natural seasons, we also go through spiritual seasons. And Paul told Timothy, instructed him to be instant, be continuance, continue. Amen. Amen. Don't let your, your current circumstances dictate you and your walk with God. Amen? Yes, there will be changes. Yes, there will be springtime. And yes, there will also be winter when everything seems dead in our lives at times. Amen? Praise God. <clears throat> the very first psalm, which I didn't get in my notes, you know, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners. Amen. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the Lord, Amen. the law of the Lord. Amen. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters, whose leaf does not wither. Amen. In other words, even though he goes through difficult times, he's going to be like a tree that's planted. And he's going to be an evergreen. Amen. When all the other trees are dying, you can still be an evergreen. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But there's things we need to do to get ourselves in those places where we have success year-round with God. Amen. Not exempting us from trials, but making it through the trials. Amen. And not just scraping by, but having victory through the trials. Power with God through the trials. Amen. And so that's what I feel that the Lord has given me today. Amen. Something that will, if you will not just hear it, but if you will do it, yeah. amen, it will help you in your walk with God. So we're going to look at Psalms 149. We're going to read the whole psalm. Amen. <clears throat> But I first want to read the first five verses and then we'll pray and you can be seated after that. Praise God. But we're going to continue and read because this whole psalms, this whole psalm it goes together. It's saying something. It's saying something to us. Yeah. Amen. So the psalmist writes, verse 1, Praise God. Ye the Lord, sing unto the Lord a new song and his praise in the congregation of saints. Amen. That's where we're at this morning. Amen. We're in the congregation of saints. The new song is referencing don't bring God ritual. Bring God something fresh. Amen. Amen. If you want to be successful with God, you've got to stir yourself up and bring something to God that's new and fresh, not something that's stale, that's ritualistic and old. Amen? He goes on to say, let Israel rejoice. Everybody say rejoice. rejoice. This is what Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. This is not just an... Old Testament instruction. Amen. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Be joyful in their king. God wants you to be joyful in your king. I said God wants you to be joyful in your king. And we're talking about in the congregation of saints. Be joyful in the congregation of saints. Amen. Amen. Yes. Be joyful in your king. Amen. Let them praise his name in the dance. Well, that's just not me, Brother Ratliff. It may not be you, but it is God's instructions to success. Yes. I said it is God's instructions Get beyond yourself. Amen. Learn to worship God in His house. 
Bring something fresh to God. Get beyond you. Amen. Amen. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. I'm glad to see Brother Marty picking up that tambourine. Amen. I, nobody taught him to do that. Amen. He picked it up. He feels something inside of him. Amen. He just prayed through to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. For the Lord taketh pleasure. He likes it. He likes it when people get out in the aisles. He likes it when people get out and dance before him. He likes it when people get joyful in his presence. He takes delight in it. He enjoys it. The Lord taketh pleasure in his people. He will beautify the meek with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Amen. Let it be in the congregation of saints. But don't leave it there. Take it home with you. Learn to praise God at all times and at all moments. Wake up praising Him. It's very, very important to your success in living for God. Amen. Lord, would you help me this morning to minister, God, to this congregation? Oh, God, let something be said to help us, that we be victorious in you, that we walk with you and bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may think this is just a psalm that you can read and... And you can enjoy it. It sounds good. But the truth of the matter, it is a scripture. They are scriptures of instructions. I said they are scriptures that instruct us. Amen. Amen. They are important. Amen. Amen. Praise God. If any of us get sick, amen, the majority of us, some of us, or hard-headed, I was accused of that, <laughs> basically. <laughs> My mother-in-law kept telling me, you need to be in the hospital. <laughs> I don't want to go to the doctor. I'm not knocking them. I just don't want to. Right. Amen. I believe the saints are praying for me. Amen. Amen. I believe that. I'm not saying I wouldn't. I'm just saying I don't want to. Amen. I want to trust the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everything is not speedy. You just got to hang in there. And keep having faith in the Amen. Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm not criticizing anybody that does. Amen. Go to the doctors. I'm not criticizing. Please don't take it as that. Because that's not my intention. Amen. But if you went to the doctor, if you was ill, if you was having trouble and difficulty with something in your life, and you went to the doctor, mm-hmm. amen, and he gave you a prescription, He tells you, well, this is what you got. And this is what you need to take in order, amen, to get healthy again. If you want your health regained, Mm -hmm. then you need to take this prescription. Amen. Well, if his his diagnostic or diagnosis however you say it, is correct and the prescription that he prescribes is truly what you need. Amen. He can write you. He can tell you. He can prescribe it to you. He can have the pharmacist called and they can get the prescription together. Amen. Praise God. You can go and Shell out the cash to pay for your subscription. You can take it home and you can set it on the shelf. Amen. You can read its instructions, what you need to do and how often you need to take it. You can go through every bit of that stuff. You can take it home. You can have it in your possession. Amen. But unless you ingest it, 
into your being, you're still going to be sick. You're still going to have trouble. You're not going to be healed by just knowing it or having it around you. You've got to take the prescription inside of your being. Amen. 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 And that's exactly what the Word of God has given us. It's given us a prescription that if we will not only hear it, but we will actually take it, pay attention to it, and ingest it into our being, not talk about it, not just to hear a sermon about it, but actually take it inside of our lives and put it into practice, it will heal your life. You can hear it 4,000 times and it won't do anything for you until you ingest it. That's it. Come on. That's right. Until it becomes part of the inside of you. And that's what these scriptures are. They're given to God's people. Amen. These first few verses cover worshiping God, praising God. Amen. Some of us, listen to me. Some of us when we was in the world. Amen. I was. I loved dancing. Amen. My mother pretty well taught me how to dance. Amen. I was a two-stepper. And you know what? I get a few beers down me. I didn't care who saw me. I got a little buzz and get out of the way. Here I come. I dance my life away all night until they close. Amen. I got to the point where I didn't even have to have something to intoxicate me for me to get out there. Amen. I got to where it was just natural to go and to get out on the dance floor and to dance, dance, dance. Amen. Praise God. In fact, I actually got pretty good at it. I did. My mother was very good at it. She was. Amen. And uh, praise God. Amen. But somehow, whenever we come to the house of God, we seem to have the idea that we need to shut the dancing down. We need to shut the worship down. Amen. We're not dancing to the same spirit. We're not dancing to the same tunes. Amen. Praise God. But our worship has changed. And our worship is not unclean. Our dancing is not unclean. When it's directed, amen, with joy and thanksgiving and worship to the one that has delivered us from the wicked and the sinful life that we live. Amen. Some of us need to get a little bit intoxicated so that we can get out on God's dance floor. Amen. We need to get intoxicated, not with liquor, we don't need to be filled with wine. We're in his excess. But we need to be filled with the Spirit and get out in the aisles and worship our God. Worship our Creator. If you want God to wrought deliverance in your life, you must take his prescription. You've got to. You'll never change if you don't. It doesn't matter how many times you hear it. Until you ingest it into your being. It's just medicine sitting on the shelf. It's just stuff that you've been instructed and told about. Amen. That will heal you. Amen. You can leave that pill bottle all you want on that shelf. It ain't going to do you no good until you pick it up. You open it and you start putting it inside of you. It must be received. It must be. Amen. Holy. Don't wait for a magic wand when God has given you your, his word. Amen. Don't wait for some, you know, supernatural dynamic thing. And I know God does those things. But he, when he gives us instructions, amen, those instructions are for our healing. Oh, praise God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I want to help you today. I want to help you today. 
I want to help you to understand. Praise God. We're in a battle, folks. We are in a battle. Praise God. And there's some things. If we are going to win, we are going to win. We must do these things that God has given unto us. We must actually do them. Amen? We must actually let them become a part of our lives. Not just hear them, but actually say, hey, that's my remedy. That's God's instructions to me. It's not Brother Ratliff's instructions. I'm not reading you my instructions. I'm reading you the Word of God. It's the Word of God. Amen? Amen. And if it is put into practice, it will heal your life. And you will get to a place if you will continue to put it into your life where you are instant in season and out of season. You will, no matter what season it is, you will be an evergreen. You will leaf out year round. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaf does not wither. Amen. Its fruit will not fail. Amen. And I want that for you. And I believe God wants that for you. Amen. But he's not going to pry us. He's not going to make us. He gives us instructions. And if we will do them, he will heal our lives. Did it not say in the Psalms, and he sent his word and healed them? He sent his word and healed them. I told you I want to read some more on this psalm. Praise God. So he tells them to worship. And he tells them that God, he takes pleasure in their worship. He takes pleasure in them getting out and being joyful. He doesn't want you sad. He doesn't want you defeated. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have pleasure in his salvation. He wants you to get beside yourself for his goodness that he has showed to you. He takes pleasure in it. There's a reason why you need to get to that place in God. And I believe the next few verses bear out the reason why. Amen. Verse number 6 says, Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a, and a two-edged sword in their hand. The high praises. I mean, you may wonder, what are the high praises? Amen. The word high there means exaltation. Yeah. Amen. Exaltation. Amen. Not just sitting back and saying, praise the Lord. That's not a whole lot of exaltation to that. But if you look at Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, you'll see some people that were exalting him, that were expressing exaltation. They pulled off their coats that he could ride over them. They broke palm branches off and they began to weigh. We sang the song this morning, Hosanna, Hosanna. Hosanna in the highest. I want you to know those people, they got a little bit radical with God. They got a little bit radical in their worship with the Lord. They were shouting. They were dancing. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. They were making such a scene that religion turned around to Jesus and said Jesus stopped them from doing that. He said if these hold their peace, the very rocks are going going to cry out. He wasn't mad at them. They were giving him what he really does want. He wants to be exalted. He wants to be exalted. He takes pleasure in his people lifting him up. He has no pleasure in people rejoicing about a pig skin. He has no pleasure in people rejoicing about the things of the world. 
because they won a lottery. He doesn't take any pleasure in any of those things. But he gets very excited. And he gets very pleased. Amen. When people get excited about the salvation that he provided for them. Amen. John the Baptist, amen, upon hearing the salutation of Mary still being in the womb of his mother Elizabeth when he heard the salutation of Mary, the Bible says the babe leaped in her womb. Amen. God likes people to get excited about what he has done and what he has provided for them. Those that do, those that worship will find themselves being strengthened. They will find themselves being empowered. They will find themselves defeating their enemy. But those that do not will live a sick life. They will live feeble. They may profess Jesus, but they will be sick all their life until they take his prescription. <coughs> we need to learn to praise the Lord. We need to learn to worship the Lord. Come on. We need to become as little children. Except we become as little children, we will in no wise enter into the kingdom of God. I think of Carly the other night. You missed it, Amanda. You missed it. But oh, I got your blessing. Amen, because I was there with that baby. Amen. I walked around and that baby was just standing there. She was in this pew back here, I think. Was she? she was in this pew. Amen. Praise God. And she was, you know, like too often, so many kids, they were, she was just doing this. People were shouting, worshiping. <laughs> and I walked over to her and I said, do you want the Holy Ghost? <laughs> and she said, oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, if you will, I said, you're going to live for Jesus? You know, you're going to let go of everything? And you're going to live for Jesus? You love him? And you, you, you know, you're willing to, do, you know, just live or give your heart, life to him? Live for him? She said, yeah. I said, well, if you'll start worshiping him, he'll give you the Holy Ghost. And I just walked off. <laughs> I walked back here. <laughs> Praise God. And in just a moment, I looked over there, and that baby was getting after it. That baby was getting after it. She wasn't faking it. She was real. She was real. She got in the spirit. I could tell she wasn't just going through the mechanics. She was in the spirit. That baby was worshiping the Lord. She was near tears. And the next thing you know, she started speaking in tongues as the spirit gave the utterance. Amen. She wasn't worried about who saw her. She found out that if I will worship Jesus, I will begin to feel his presence and I will get what I need from him. And I want you to know, a lot of people left that night without what they needed from God. But Carly did not leave that night without what she needed from God. He don't care if you're young. He don't care if you're old. He don't care if you're sick and feeble. He cares that you worship him. Amen. If you want victory in your life, I'm giving you a prescription. Amen. You've heard about it many times, but I promise you, it works. Yes. Amen. If you actually ingest it into your life. So let the high praises of God be in their mouth. In whose mouth? God's people. Let the high praises and a two-edged sword in their hand. So, we need to praise God. We need to worship God. But we also need to have the two-edged sword in our hand. Amen. We need to have the two-edged sword in our hand. He said to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishment upon the people to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. Amen. In other words, your enemy that you are fighting against, those that hate you and those that hate your God, you need to have exaltation of God and you need to have a two-edged sword in your hand. Amen. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles and fetters of iron to execute. You are to execute. Amen. If you don't do what God says, you can't execute. 
Amen. To execute upon them. Who? These enemies. To execute upon them the judgment written. Amen. This honor. This honor. Have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Amen. You've got to have a two-edged sword in your hand. You've got to have the high praises of God in your mouth. Amen. Israel fought against natural men, enemies, people. They warred against armies, actual nations that were atheistic, that were idolaters, that were offering their children oftentimes to their idol gods. And God was fed up with them. And he sent Israel, amen, to obliviate them because of their abominable wickedness things that they were partaking in. And God gave Israel the way to defeat them. You've got to have the high praises of God in your mouth. You've got to have a sharp sword, two-edged sword in your hand. Today we realize, amen, we know through the word of God that we do not fight people and we are not warring against people. But make no mistake about it, we have an enemy. There are Kings of darkness, princesses of darkness that we fight against and we war against. And it takes the same remedy to defeat them that Israel had to have to defeat, amen, the natural enemy. You want to fight the devil and defeat him. You want to get him off of your head and under your feet where he belongs. Amen. You need the high praises of God in your mouth. And you need a sharp two-edged sword in your hand. Amen. Every one of God's saints has been given this honor to execute this judgment upon their enemies. But you're not going to do it unless you do it God's prescribed way. Amen. <coughs> you can try other alternatives. You can try other methods. Just like you can refuse to take the physician's uh, prescription and you can try your generic stuff. But I'm afraid you're going to come up sick every time and you're going to come up short and your enemy is not going to defeat you, be defeated until you go God's way. Amen. This is a prescription. Amen. Amen. Paul said it like this to the Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. We're not fighting people. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, it's not knives and guns and grenades. Amen. But mighty. We do have weapons. We're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity. We are to bring into captivity. Amen. Every thought to the obedience of Christ and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is full, fulfilled. Amen. Praise God. We have an enemy that we war against. Paul told the Ephesian church, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. He's talking about people. We don't fight people. But we do have an enemy. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And because of this, we are in a fervent battle, a fight. Amen. And we must follow the instructions of the Lord if we are going to live a victorious life and an overcoming life. We can't do it our way. We can't do it going through rituals. We got to take up the Word of God and hear the Word of God. Follow its instructions, ingest its instructions, and defeat the enemy. He has not called us, amen, to run from the enemy. He has not called us to a battle where we will be defeated. If we will do what God says, we will overcome. 
We're not wrestling against people, but we are wrestling against, wrestling against powers. He says, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins gird about with truth, Amen. and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, he says above all, Definitely don't leave this off. Above all, taking the shield of faith uh, wherewith you be, shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All of these things are for our protection. But I'm here to tell you, God has not just given us things of defense. He has given us a weapon of offense. And, above, and he says, and take unto you the helmet of salvation. That's to protect you. Amen? And the sword. Here's our weapon. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching there too with all perseverance for all saints. Amen? you got to understand, our sword is still, amen, the weapon, amen, that we are to use. We are still had to have the high praises of God in our mouth, but we are to have that two-edged sword in our hand. Amen. amen. You can look in the Word of God. Amen. And you can find out what the sword is. Revelation chapter number 1. Praise God. Verse number 12. Amen. Jesus has appeared unto John on the Isle of Patmos. John turns and sees the voice that spake with me. He says... And behold, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to his foot, and girt about the, the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet likened to fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Amen. And his voice as the voice of many waters, and he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth, out of his mouth goeth uh, went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was out as the sun shineth in his strength. The one that Paul, or John rather, saw on the Isle of Patmos, he had a sharp two-edged sword coming out of his mouth. Amen? If you'll notice and read those seven churches, that sharp sword is mentioned again. That sharp sword is the Word of God coming out of his mouth. We must have that Word of God. We must have it. It is our weapon to overcome. We can't live our own way. We need to live by the Word of God. For man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the Word of God. The Word of God, everybody say the Word of God. Word of God. It's quick. And powerful. The word quick means it's living. Yeah. It's alive. Amen. You twist this book to sound, to say something different than what it's saying. You're not, you're not, you don't have the word of God. Right. You may have some writing on paper, but it's the word of God when it's interpreted correctly. Amen. The word of God, it is living and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. That's what Jesus had coming out of his mouth. It does something. It pierces even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and the joints and marrow and is the discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. His sight. The word of God is God. And there's not a creature that's not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked 
and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. The word of God is our weapon. Amen. Those enemies that come against you. Amen. Those enemies that fight against you. You have a weapon given unto you by God. It is the word of God. It will sever the darkness from you that comes against your life. You need the word of God. Living, vibrant, rampant in your life. Did not John say, I, uh, he, he commended the young men because that they, they had overcome the wicked one by having the word of God in their lives. Amen. Oh, somebody say praise the, Lord. praise the Lord. Oh my goodness, I believe you started hearing a sermon now. Praise God, are you listening to what I'm saying? Amen. I'm talking about a prescription from God that will cause you to defeat the enemy, that will cause you to overcome the enemy. You can hear it four times a day, 20 times a day, 4,000 times a year, but it won't do you any good until you ingest it. Yeah, that's right. Oh, praise God. How many times have we heard it? How many times have we been told how many times have we heard the story of Paul and Silas cast in the prison? You know the story. You've heard it many, many times. Amen. They did not just hear the story. They just didn't hear the word of God. It was something that they took to heart. And whenever they was in a bind, and when they was in trouble, when they were hurting, when they were facing the enemy, whenever they were being buffeted, imprisoned, put in chains, put in the most horrible places, in the darkest hour of the night, they not only had knowledge of what to do, they put it into practice. They had it ingested into their lives. And at midnight, they begin to sing and to pray unto God. And the Bible says, amen, the place was shaken. God sent an earthquake. And all of their bands, not only theirs, but everyone in the prison, their bands were loosed. And the doors were open. And everybody was freed. <coughs> That's not just a Sunday school story. To some it is. That really happened and it really works today to people that will really ingest this word and take it to heart. It will free you from the dilemmas that you are in. It will free you from the devil being on your back and on your head. It will put your enemy under your feet. That's where he belongs. That's where he belongs. The Lord. I said that's where he belongs. That's where he belongs. The devil don't belong in your head. Right. Amen. When Jesus told the serpent in the garden, Amen, you're going to bruise her heel, but she's going to bruise your head. He didn't say you're going to be on her head. No, she's going to bruise your head. Amen. You're going to bruise her heel. I know there's going to be a war. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be a battle. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise God, things are going to come against you. You're going to face enemies. There's principalities and powers. There's spiritual wickedness in high places. There's spirits around. There's things that's around, and they try to attack your family. And listen to me, a lot of people are suffering today in their homes because their homes are filled with yeah. carnality. Right. That's right. Moms and dads fighting, and they're wondering why they're having difficulty with their children. I want you to know something. You need to pray through. Get the love of God in your home. Get convictions. When you come to church, don't sit there. Get up. Show your children the path to success with God. Worship your creator. Worship him. Be humble before your God. Amen. Quit fighting over the preacher and telling your children it's his opinion when he's preaching unto you the word of God. Your children need the word of God in their lives. They too will face the enemy. You'll be put in a grave, but they'll have to be here. <coughs> they'll have to be here. And they're going to fight a battle. Hey man, that devil's been around a long time. He's been around a long time. He studied humanity. He knows the Bible better than you do. The only people that he has problem with is people that worship God and that obey the word of God. 
The rest of them are just toys and pawns in his hand. He works destruction in their homes. He works destructions on their jobs. He works destruction continuously. But a man that fears God, a man and a woman that has their life under submission to God, consecrated, dedicated to God, doesn't come to the church for religion, but comes to be worshipers. Amen. Amen. He's afraid of that person. He fears that person because greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. Amen. As long as you've got the world in your life, the devil's not afraid of you. That's his stomping grounds. That's his stomping grounds. When we live carnal lives, listen to me, I've said it. I know you probably get sick of hearing me here tell you this, but when you live carnally, your life is not under subjection to God. No. Your life is not, you're doing your own thing, yeah. and your life is not subject to God. You are carnal. That's right. I'm going to tell you something. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Carnality is the path that the devil gains entrance to your life through. Yeah. Close off the carnality, and you close the road that he gains entrance. Amen. you got to close that door. It's going to take some humbling. It's going to take some dying. Because listen to me, when you're in the heat of the battle sometime, amen, and somebody's set your fire aflame, your flesh, and you're wanting to tell them off, sometimes it's hard to refuse those passions. But Jesus said if you're going to be his disciples, you're going to have to deny yourself. And you're going to have to take up your cross and follow him. If you love your family, if you love your loved ones, you'll do yourself a favor and die out to carnality. Amen. So the devil will lose his, his grip from your home. Amen. I'm just preaching. I'm just preaching. Preach. Amen. I, so I, 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 you know, I don't mean to brag on mine, but I always love my wife. Amen. It's one of the things that attracted to me most. She used to shout all over the place. Hey, man, she was a worshiper. I'd come into church. One of the things that attracted me to her before we were married, I'd come in, and she'd be down behind, beside the bench, and she'd be talking in other tongues as the Spirit. She didn't wait, doing all the visiting before church. She did visit in some, but when it came time for prayer, she was in prayer, and she was interceding. And I want you to know she was praying and travailing. She was crying at times. Hey Amen. I want you to know so that attracted this old boy to that girl. This attracted me to her because you know what? I like that. I want God. I want a family that's full of God. I want God to be ruler in my house. I want to be a worshiper. I want my kids to learn to worship. How can they learn to worship if I don't worship? Amen. How can they? How can they? If they repeat your life, what will their life be like? And that's not an accusation. It's just if they repeat who you are, what will they be? What will they be? Will they be praisers? I'm so proud of these young men coming up here to the altar. It's the beginning. Hey, man, yeah, I know they need to learn some other things, but thank God. Nobody's making them come. And thank God for the parents that are coming up and encouraging them. Encourage them. Oh, my goodness. Dad and Mom, let your babies see you worship God. Let your babies see you be humble before God. Let your babies see you cry before God. Let your babies see. Your babies need it. They need it. They need to see it. Am I making you feel bad? Huh? I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I'm just trying to preach to you. I'm just trying, trying to give you a prescription that God wanted me to give you this morning. I'm taking it too. Amen. Amen. You got to understand, I had this before you're getting it. I got, you know why? You see me out in those aisles this morning running? <laughs> Oh, fake Jesse Ratliff, I'd have been a, nothing but a fake if I sat back and didn't, amen, start it out. 
If I'm telling you to preach, I mean to shout and to worship, I need to be a shouter and a worshiper. I don't always feel like it. Hey Amen. Brother Griggs was preaching the other night. And he looked over at Marty. <laughs> I like Marty. Don't you like Marty? He said, run for me. <laughs> you know what, Brother Marty? Ran. He didn't just run one time. He made a couple around. You can say, oh, that's preacher religion. I want you to know it's obedience. It's an obedience. It's a humble spirit to take orders from somebody else. Amen. It's humbleness. Amen. People that don't want nobody telling them what to do is full of pride and a stench in the nostrils of God. Amen. It is. Amen. My, my pastor told me to jump over a bucket. I'd have jumped over it. Where's that in Scripture? Obey them to have the rule over you. It didn't say nothing about a bucket, but it did say obey them to have a rule over you. Maybe God's trying to do something that I'm even not aware of. Maybe God's trying to set me free from me. Maybe God's trying to set me free in liberty and make liberty in my life where I can come in and not have to be told to worship. Amen? But I can worship Him. I get used to it and I begin to worship Him. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm not trying to be crude or rude, I know anything. I just, I'm trying to give you a prescription. Amen. A prescription. Folks, I got this together this morning. The, the God gave me the scriptures, the, 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 the Psalms, about two weeks ago. I never got it together. I got nine pages of notes here, what I was going to talk about. I already had them together. Finished them up this morning. So Brother Dingman or whoever did the deal. <laughs> At 9.15, I believe it was, 20, the Lord instructed me to preach this. You know what? You know what I said? Yes, I will. We are better. You ain't practiced. It doesn't seem like he, I'm having to. It seems like he's helping me. Because I, I don't have a sermon for you. I have a message for you. There you go. I have something that thus says the Lord to you. Amen. Thus says the Lord to you. Amen. God loves you enough to give you instructions. Amen. But no matter how good or bad I preach, I can't make you do it. And if you don't do it, you're going to continue to struggle. You're going to continue. The devil's going to live on your head. He's going to put a perch on your head. And he's going to live in you. And you're going to struggle. And you're going to you're going you're gonna to just flail around. You're going to live a defeated life when it's all unnecessary. That's right. That's right. God loves you and wants you to have power. Yeah. Year round. Amen. Year round. Amen. Year round. Right. you got to understand. What do we read? He takes delight in his saints being Joyful. He wants you to be joyful. I'm not preaching this morning to bring you down. I'm giving you a prescription. So God wants you to be joyful. He wants you, Brother Dwight, not because Brother Rattler said, would you dance around here a little bit? No, he wants you to come here because you have victory. He wants you to come around. Amen. Praise God. Oh, I'm happy in Jesus. I'm in joy in Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm in joy in Jesus. Hallelujah. Since that day, I can't remember all the song. I'm in joy in Jesus. 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 Enjoy in Jesus, hallelujah. Come on, somebody join me. Enjoy in Jesus. Come on, Sister Alice. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Oh, yes, son. Enjoy in Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, since I found him, I've been feeling mighty happy. Jerry, I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying. Anybody dancing with me? Enjoy in Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. I know you're going to have to be humble to do this. I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, sis. I found him, I've been feeling mighty happy. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. Are you enjoying Jesus? I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. I'm enjoying. Come on, get out. Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Does he put a pep in your step? Enjoy in Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, since I found him, I've been feeling mighty happy. Yeah, enjoy in Jesus. I'm Woo! hallelujah. Enjoy in Jesus. I'm enjoy in Jesus. Enjoy in Jesus. Yeah, enjoy it, Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm enjoying Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm enjoying Jesus, hallelujah. Oh, since I, if I was a sister, I'd grab you and dance with you. All I could do is get your husband. Hallelujah. Praise God. I wish one of you other sisters would do it for me. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, it does. It feels good. I'm not bound. And you know what? Jesus is very happy. He's very pleased. 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 He wants us to worship him. I'm out of breath. <laughs> Oh, I need to lose some weight. I need to lose some weight. <laughs> I'm out of breath. Praise God. I don't want to live a defeated life. I want to live a life with power, with God. I want to devour this word. I want to live by this word. And I want to make, listen to me, the high praises of God. Amen. To be heard. I want to open my mouth and praise Him. I want to dance before the great congregation. I want to go home and sing about Him on my bed. Not just here, says Cooper. Amen. <coughs> In everything, give thanks, Paul said. Amen. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Oh, hallelujah. <coughs> Praise God. Oh, this is, this is fun. I'm having fun this morning. Are you having fun this morning? You having fun this morning, Roland? I didn't preach to bring nobody down. I didn't preach to criticize anybody. I preached a prescription. A prescription. God gave me a prescription for your success. I preached a prescription. Just don't be like little children don't want to take their medicine. <coughs> Hush. <laughs> Hush. <laughs> she wanted me to take medicine. I said, I don't want no medicine. But I do want to take this medicine. I do want to take this medicine. I do want to take this medicine. Oh, praise God. God is kind to us. Do you understand I love you this morning? I really do. I love you this morning. I want everyone here to make it. 
But I am telling you, if we don't listen and put into practice, if you're living a defeated life, if you've got things that the devil's beating you up on, he's always trying with all of us. But some, of, some people he can't affect a lot because of what I'm telling you. They are doing what God's word tells them to do. And God does not want anybody to live defeated. <coughs> you can be <coughs> fat and sassy in the flesh and be sick and scrawny and puny spiritually. Yeah. You may be rolling high. You may have all the money you need. But you may be a skeleton spiritually. Right. And the devil may have his spiritual aid virus inside of you attacking your immune system. Mm -hmm. You need to learn how to fight him. Yeah. Your spiritual immune system. Hey Amen. You need to learn. You can do all you want to do and try all you want. Other, other, other methods, other ways. But until you do it, what God has told you to do, actually ingest his prescription. Amen. Actually ingest his prescription. You'll find yourself struggling. Please don't do that. Please. This church is here to help you. This church is here. This pastor's here. To help you. If I told people to go to AA, some of them would go to AA. If I told some people to go to drug rehab, they'd probably go to drug rehab. But I'm not telling them to do that. I'm telling them God's got a prescription that'll free them. That'll free them. And I can't do it for you. All I can do is tell you what the prescription is. Amen. If you will ingest it, <coughs> amen, he will heal your life. Amen. Praise God. Man, oh man. <clears throat> I don't know how long I've been preaching, but amen. I do feel that I have delivered what the Lord wanted me to tell you this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. So I'm not going to hold you. But when you leave these doors, you're going to pay attention to it and do it, or you're not going to. Yeah. I hope you hear. Everything I preach this morning, I preach for your benefit and for your well-being. Amen. That's all I'm getting out of it. The satisfaction of knowing that perhaps something has helped you to get stronger with Amen. Jesus. That's what I care about. If you don't do it, I'm still going to love you. And I'm still going to try to seek God and ask God, give me something, Lord, that'll help them. That's what I pray. Give me something, Lord, that's going to help your people. Yeah. This just happens to be what he gave me today. <clears throat> I believe it'll happen. Amen. Let's pray as we're being dismissed. God, thank you for the <clears throat> opportunity that we've had here this morning, Jesus. Thank you for your presence. God, thank you for your love, for your people, for your care for each one of them. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you for your goodness. God Almighty, you do everything for our good. Great God of heaven. And I just pray that what something has been said this morning that's going to help your people to overcome the enemy that is fighting against them. That they can overcome. Help them to be humbled enough to receive it, God. Help them today, God, to put into practice what your word teaches us. We need you today. And I do you believe that you've been here and you've helped me to minister this word to your people. I believe that, God. And I just pray myself as well, all of us, that we not only be hearers but doers of your word. <clears throat> Praise us. Keep us, Lord Jesus. 
as we're being dismissed this morning, <clears throat> bring us again this evening. Should you tarry your coming? And anoint the ministry tonight, whoever it is that's going to be ministering tonight, God. Anoint them and use them to feed your people, that your people will gain strength, God. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say in Jesus' name. You're dismissed in the fear of the Lord. <coughs> Praise God.